Hey guys, it's Javad, and uh, it's time for another speaker project. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the Renaissance Reference Mini Monitors that I'm posting about right now on the DIY Loudspeaker Project Pad on Facebook. Uh, that was a really fun project that uh, Jeff and I did together, and I actually built those cabinets in four days. So it was a, a whirlwind effort, and I actually still went to work. So... Um, I just didn't sleep as much those four days and because um, I work quick so they turn they turn out great keep keep watching the progress uh, last night I posted about how I did the chamfers on it and I think that's a great technique that a lot of you guys can use and you don't need any fancy table saw fixtures or anything like that um, you just need a circular saw some wood and uh, a little determination you gotta make sure you eat your Wheaties before you do it. But other than that, you're good. So uh, I wanna talk about a new project that I'm working on. I'm actually building these for a friend. His name's Sonu. And um, he wanted to kind of do an ultimate high-end driver design. And he poked around the Parts Express website long enough and finally convinced himself that uh, a Morale three-way was, was what he had to have. And uh, hell, I wasn't gonna argue with him. So he, he picked out some top-notch drivers, and uh, the project is called the Sorrells. So uh, the name is because Sorrell rhymes with morale, and his name's Sonu. So it's a kind of a cool, catchy name. It's also a mushroom, but I, I really couldn't make any connections there, so I'd be lying to you if I did. Um, so anyways, these are the Sorrells, and it's a 9-inch, uh, a 6-inch morale three-way. Um, again, uh, real high-end drivers, the, the Morel Supremo tweeters and mid, and uh, a Morel Titanium 9-inch subwoofer, which uh, I'm not sure if it's available anymore. Parts Express doesn't list it any longer, but you can get them on eBay. But Morel has, has a whole line of drivers similar to it. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I usually don't do this on the intros, but uh, this is where the cabinets are at. Tell you guys a little bit about them. So it's all uh, 18 mil Russian birch, which is similar to Baltic birch, but I like it a little bit better. Um, now what I did is I've got 18 mil on the outside, and then I've got some quarter inch pine plywood on the inside. Um, I did this to thicken up the sidewalls, but the I guess the the theory would be that the pine resonates a, 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 has different resonant characteristics than the birch. It's a much softer wood. And so together they can create some destructive interference. Um, but mostly it's thicker, and that was the goal. Um, and so we have we now have approximately a one inch wall thickness everywhere. <clears throat> uh, the mid chamber is also um, Russian birch, and you can see, I mean, the front's not even on, and this thing's like a solid block of wood. Um, but I made the mid-chamber uh, really big for two reasons. One, um, in all the modeling I did, I really only needed about 1.25 cubic feet ported. Um, going any bigger just uh, created a, an extreme boost in the 40 to 50 hertz range. Um, uh, just a really extreme uh, boosted response. And so with, with 1.25 cubic feet tuned to 35 hertz, there's a small 2 dB boost in the modeling between 40 and 50 hertz, which I think will sound great. Um, and uh, it'll give the speaker just a more lively bass character. But um, I really couldn't, I mean, I didn't want to make the cabinet real thin and I didn't want to make it narrow because I really don't believe in narrow cabinets. I like wide baffles. It really helps with diffraction and it pushes as much of the sound from the tweeter forward uh, as possible, which uh, really alleviates the tweeter and how it interacts with the edges of the cabinet. So um, so the mid-chamber is about 0.3 cubic feet to take up uh, some of the extra space in the cabinet that the woofer doesn't want. Um, it's also oversized, which allows me to fill this whole chamber with damping material and really absorb that back wave in the mid so that there's, there's no energy coming back through the cone. So this, this is where the woofer will go, and you can kind of see this is, a, this is the base baffle, and then eventually I'll have a hardwood baffle over this. And then this is where the port will go. So the, the port will, will angle up, 
and I'll be using a mandrel bend like this. This is a three and a half inch, well, that's about 3.4 inch inside diameter. But I'll be making it out of aluminum because it doesn't need to be stainless steel. Um, but that allows me to um, get the port velocities down despite the bend, still models well. And uh, I can fit it in the cabinet because this isn't a very big or deep cabinet. Um, and then the tweeter will be here and the mid will be here. Um, heavily, heavily braced, really rigid non-resonant cabinet. And I'll be applying some Noiko um, sheets to the inside of this as well. The other thing I'm not going to tell you about right now because I want you guys to see it. I'm going to do a really cool treatment to this cabinet. Um, I've never seen it done on a speaker and I think it's a really cool technique and it kind of takes plywood to the next level. So I'm excited to do that and uh, show you guys how that plays out. Uh, here is the, the hardwood I'm using. And my friend Sonu, uh, we went to the, the hardwood store and he saw this stuff and he had to have it. I've never worked with it, but I've known about it. I'm excited to work with it. Uh, it's going to make a mess out of my shop, but uh, it's called Wenge. Like, Wenge are these speakers going to be done? Um, it's a tropical hardwood. It's not stained. So this is actually how the wood looks. And uh, it's just extremely hard, dense wood. Um... I'd say at least two to three times more dense than like walnut. And the grain is just something else. I mean, this, this grain here kind of doesn't even look real. I mean, it looks fake. Really cool stuff. So I've, we, we picked out these three boards and I've gone through the boards and I'm, I've matched up the boards to create the baffles and the top will also have this wenge on it. So, all right, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the drivers uh, I'll be using in this. We can start with the, uh, the mid. This is the Morel SCM 634 Supreme Mid. I've worked with some sexy drivers from Satori and uh, CSS, but these Morels are just a whole other level of sexiness. So, so the cone is actually a three-layer sandwich of carbon fiber, Roa cell and carbon fiber. So it's extremely well damped. Um, this, this driver has a really clean response up to about four uh, kilohertz. And even then it doesn't really exhibit any real bad breakup modes above that. Uh, I'll probably be crossing it over around 2000 hertz and it's going to be extremely easy to work with within that range. It's just a flat line up, you know, pretty much up to that point. Uh, this has a three inch voice coil, the, Morel Hexatech voice coil, where instead of the voice coil wires being round, they're hexagonal. So there's no gaps in the wires. And, you know, it just makes for a more efficient uh, electric, uh, mag electromagnetic uh, property. Um, full copper sleeve and cap in here. Um, I'll be using this from about 250 hertz, probably, to about 2000 hertz. Extremely flat and usable in that range. Really beautiful driver, very open on the back, so there should, shouldn't be any issues with reflections off the frame. Very vented, these things can take a ton of power. So um, unfortunately, since this is just gonna have one nine inch woofer, the sensitivity of this speaker will be about 85 dB. So I'll have to pad this and the tweeter down a little bit to uh, reach um, the, you know, the, the woofer, but the, the final, um, the final sensitivity on the speaker will be around 85 dB after baffle step correction and everything. So that's the Morel SCM 634. All right. Now, uh, this is an interesting tweeter that, uh, Sonu found on eBay. They're basically the Morel Supreme tweeters and this is cool. They come with their own data sheet. Each tweeter um, serial number has been tested, and this is the, this is the actual response of this speaker. Uh, you can see it's it's quite flat up to about fifteen thousand hertz, and I can bring this uh, 
this area up in the crossover, no problem. But this should be a real nice tweeter to work with. Um, very flat to 2000 Hertz. And um, I think, you know, a crossover in the two to 2.5 K range will work really well. Um, I already did some uh, distortion testing on these. It's basically second and third order are non-existent. It's, they're really good. They come in this beautiful box, which uh, not many speakers do. But this is basically the Morale Supremo tweeter, but it has a different faceplate, and it's it's kind of cool, right? So it has an offset faceplate. Look, appears to be the same motor and chamber as the regular Supreme tweeter. Um, I think this flange probably fits in like a five-inch Morel mid uh, recess as well. Um, I like how. This has a minimal flange area, so I can move this tweeter really close to the mid. The mid will be right here next to it, and I can reduce the center to center distance of those drivers. Um, and so they can pretty much act as a point source um, because they're so close to each other. But it's kind of interesting. You could theoretically rotate this tweeter around on the flange and uh, try different tweeter positions without changing the cabinet at all. So you can move the tweeter further away, you can move it off to one side or the other. Um, this is basically a one inch tweeter uh, maybe maybe it's a little bit bigger I right. it's probably eight uh, probably like the equivalent of a, a 28 millimeter tweeter or something so anyways not too much more to say about the tweeter um really cool unit and let's move on to the nine inch woofer this thing's a beast spicy meatball check out that voice coil so that's a 5.1 inch voice coil it's massive you're never going to get this thing to have any thermal compression um, big neodymium magnet um, great venting so they the manufacturer lists uh, x max as 10.5 millimeters on this which is which is a, a geometric measurement of the voice coil and uh, the voice coil gap However, uh, someone brought up a concern, I think it was Daniel Svensk, um, that there wasn't enough spider to support that uh, X-Max. And so I, I just did some physical, I set up a little jig and I, I pushed the cone down as far as it would go and I lifted it up as far as it would go. And um, it does appear that this has limited travel of about six mil down and about uh, eight to nine mil up. So even at six mil, this, this woofer can really put out some sound, um, but I don't think it will get to full 10.5, uh, which kind of sucks, but um, it'll still hit about 105 dB with about six mil of X max. So I don't uh, think it'll be any slouch in this application. Um, and again, this thing models extremely well. Like you could put this in like a point. I mean, basically you could build like a little box around the back of it. It, it models, flat to 100 hertz, uh, 80, 90 hertz in about 0.25 liters, or 0.25 cubic feet, uh, or just like three or four liters, just not much at all. Um, so I'm going to be doing ported in 1.25 um, in a sealed box of about uh, one cubic, 0.75 to one cubic foot. It's, it's flat to about 60 hertz and it has decent extension uh, you know, has a minus 12 dB roll off below that, but the port just blows it away as far as overall output down in the lower uh, 30 to 50 hertz range. So that's why I'm going ported on this, but um, really, really cool driver. Again, I don't think it's available uh, in the US. Morel still may make it, but they have a number of other drivers just like it. So Anyways, thanks for watching and following along. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget, uh, I, I document all these projects on uh, our Facebook page, DIY Loudspeaker Project Pad. <clears throat> we have almost 20,000 people now following uh, these projects as well as posting about their own. And it's an awesome community where we really strive to keep it positive, constructive, and uh, science-based. So we actually moderate for uh, the validity of the content as well. And if you're like talking out of your ass, uh, you're probably gonna 
uh, get moderated. But if you have opinions, that's okay. Everyone can have opinions. So anyways, thanks again for watching and following along. Appreciate it, guys.